my forehead is kind of little. Like, you see this three fingers. So this is the hairline completely untouched. I did bleach the knots, but as you can see, you know, the hairline's not bad, but we still gonna need to put some work in to make it look real natural. For my girls who like baby hair, you definitely wanna section out that front line of baby hair first and then start plucking if you want to have enough baby hair to you know do dramatic looks and stuff like that i however just like adding micro dips to the front of my hairline because i'm more of a no baby hair some minimal baby hair kind of girl so i'm just going through and i'm just plucking micro dips in the front of the hairline to start i do have a full tutorial on how i pluck to make my hairlines look super natural and i will put that down below so you can see it and that is the result after I plucked, and you can see the difference of the side that's not plucked yet. See how much better that looks? So I am going back two rows for this. And that is so, you know, the hairline looks gradient enough. And that is the result when I'm finished. And you see how much hair I took out, okay? So once I move on to getting ready to style the wig, I'm going to match up where my ears would be on the mannequin head to make sure, you know, as best as I can that I'm getting my part right in the middle because middle parts, you know, they're so difficult sometimes. You need to get it right precise in the middle. So that's what I'm working on there. And then I noticed, yes, I plucked a little too hard and not too far back. I didn't realize how thick that frontal was the farther back you went. So I'm going through and correcting that. See how I'm not on right on top of the hairline where i stopped plucking i don't want that to look too thinned out but i do want to thin out like the hairline well not the hairline but the frontal overall so i can get the result that you're seeing here see how that flows much better and then i'm doing the same thing to the other side and i'm also widening that middle part as well just trying to get this all flowing together nicely and i will correct that bald spot i kind of created in the end it's not bad a little black powder will do it good I've got my hot comb out and that's training the hair to go back. We don't want the hair going forward too much because then it'll get all up in your products when you're installing the wig and that is no fun and it's messy. So I'm training the hair to go back. The back of the comb is life, okay? If you didn't know, now you know. And I'm also using the comb to help me flatten and set my part as well. Back of the comb, y'all, is life. That thing will get some stuff flattened down. And I saw Sophieology do this, so I'm going to try it on here. I used some mousse to help me set the hair going back a little bit more because I like mousse or setting foam, whatever you like to call it, because, you know, it's very light, but it also gives you the effect you want. This is the hair in its entirety is 26 inches. This is the body wave after I've washed it because I did bleach the knots and it's so pretty. It's 150% density, but it looks so, so, so full, especially for being so long. So I like to, you know, uh, straighten the hair before I curl it because I feel like it gives me a better, smoother curl. So I'm taking my hot comb and I'm just running it through the hair lightly. Nothing major, just helping me tame it back down. Now I'm ready to part the wig so that I can start curling the hair. I part the wig like cleanly through in between the tracks because it's so much easier than just trying to make random parts in the hair. I used to do it that way and it was so annoying. And I like to, you know, brush the hair out first. As you can see, I'm taking pretty large sections because we want these loose, effortless, beachy wave curls so they can't be too defined. And what I learned from watching some videos on how to do this was like you wrap it around the iron, first of all, flat, like you want a curling iron curl, but you also don't wrap it very tight around the iron and you leave the ends out. You still want to hold it like you would any other curl so it'll fully form, but these are very loose from the start. You're really, really not trying to get any uh, anything too formed and this is what it looks like you know the finished result of the back as you can see those ends are real real straight and that is on purpose we want like the loose effortless ends too we don't want them too bouncy and voluminous once i rise to the top of the wig i am parting vertically instead of horizontally like i was before and but i'm doing the same technique of wrapping it very loosely flat around the iron and leaving the ends out and of course, when you get to the front, you want to make sure you're curling away from the face to frame the face. And this is the result of curling the back. As you can see, they're so loose. It's going to look so good when we're done, though. I'm taking a wide tooth comb 
and I'm just combing out the curls. I didn't want to use a brush because a brush was going to do too much. We didn't want to take out the curls. We just wanted to put them together and make them blend. And I love a white tooth comb for this because it gets the job done without ruining the hair. And this is the result of the end. So you can see why I didn't want them so curly and bouncy. It just flows a lot better straightened for this effortless look. And so now I'm taking some hairspray and I'm using a lot of hairspray. Reason being is because, well, these are very loose curls. And when they start out loose like this, they're going to fall very easy throughout the day, especially if there's humidity. So I got the hair pin back. I'm about to install. I decided to do this as a talk through because I have not done a talk through video in a minute. The hair does have some minimal tangling with it. I noticed before and after I put on the product. But if you've ever had Brazilian, you know like the hair is a little bit of a coarser texture. So it just comes with it. I didn't think it was a like a really bad problem. It was just there. I love how these effortless curls turn out. Yes. And I love that it's holding too. But y'all saw how much of this free spray I done put on it. So now applying the wig, like, y'all see how, this is what usually messes me up, is this extra bit of hair by my ear every time, for the most part. I see I'm not gonna really need to cut around the ear because it mostly fits already. And it looks like it's actually going to cover me for my little around the ear issue, so yes. I think like applying it in threes like this, like applying your lace glue or whatever you're gonna do, is so much easier. I am just gonna do a free spray today. I don't like putting my units really far past my hairline because my forehead is kind of little. Like, you see this three fingers. You can do it over or under the lace. It really just depends on you. Sometimes I like it over, sometimes I like it under, but I really don't, I'm not in the mood for it being all in my roots, so I just put it over, I mean under. It doesn't really take very long to get tacky, and oh, I do want to note, my forehead is clean, so I don't have any products on my forehead right now to stop the process of the melt. A clean forehead, y'all, changes everything. And I probably am about to spray on top, I like. I like spraying on top too. Like I don't really have a huge preference for either because it also helps you shape the hair to go back. I've been having to do my blow dryer so low in these videos recently because on my iPhone, if you didn't know, your girl broke her camera. It can be fixed, but I broke it and I've been using my iPhone for like the past month. It's been great and everything. Sometimes my line a little often without like usage is happening. But what I'm noticing is like when I put my hands in frame or when my blow dryer especially is in frame, it makes my stuff like real cloudy. So I try to keep the blow dryer out of frame because I guess like the blue color of it or something just doesn't mix well with the lighting and it makes everything just off. You can apply this stuff with your hands as long as you're doing it before it starts getting tacky. It starts getting tacky, then it's gonna start getting white on you. Cause like the oils in your fingers don't mix with the oil. Well, this isn't an oil, but don't mix with the product. Any like tacky product you're putting on your head, it's not gonna mix well with the oils that are coming out of your fingers. So let that air dry a little bit. Oh, I was talking to my friend the other day and she was saying she only uses the black gel. She hasn't ventured into the yellow gel, forgot to be. And I was like, yo, I forgot about the black gel because I use, I haven't used that in like two years. Like since I first started learning how to apply front soles, that's the last time I used the, what's it called? The black gel. Cause it's, it doesn't get tacky, but I wouldn't know anymore. Cause I have not done it since I really have known how to do front soles. Lay that down. Is that enough? We're gonna find out. The press down when you're securing your wig is so important if you want it to lay flawless. I think I'm gonna have to recurl these when I'm done. I forgot to do my ear tabs. That's fine. We ain't we ain't started uh securing the bottom yet, so we're good. Just the excess. And that's like it for the excess. Oh. Are y'all waiting to go back to like the beauty salons, like to get your hair done, your nails done? Well, I guess if you're doing wigs, maybe you don't need your hair done like me. I want my eyebrows done so bad. I'm trying to hold out until like, you know, I see what's popping after everybody else that went out. Like see what happens to them first. And then I'll make my decision, but it's getting hard y'all, these eyebrows. This one's thicker than this one, but like they getting thick. I naturally keep my shape. I'm letting this get tacky. I naturally keep my shape, but for the most part anyways, but like, my eyebrows are so thick. It's like a family trait. Like most of the people in my, on my mom's side. Yeah, most of the people on my mom's side of the family have like super thick eyebrows. I pulled out my actual hair scissors just for you guys. Cause y'all always complain 
about my big scissors y'all hating i just don't like to use like my professional actual scissors i use on my real hair you know just on lace and stuff you want to get as close to like the hairline of the lace as you possibly can when you are doing like no baby hair looks because you know you're pretty exposed you don't have the baby hair to cover you the color of this lace seems like it's gonna blend very easy for me it's not like you know i don't have to do anything to it but i won't have to do much but on the topic of beauty you guys i really want to get lash extensions when you know everything is all said and done with the pandemic and all that or once it's just you know really really safe i don't know what that even is gonna mean like nobody really knows but I want lash extensions is all I know because <laughs> I cannot put on falsies to save my life. I have so many pairs of them from like the cheap looking ones to the 3D make, especially because hair brands be sending them to you. And I have no idea how to wear them and they look so cute, but I like, I can't do it. One of my best friends, she gets them all the time and they look so good and so natural and it's like real effortless because she's a nurse so she ain't got time, you know, you trying to do a whole beauty routine every single day and stuff. And I'm just like, I need that in my life because I don't even really want to put on lashes. <laughs> Everything else is already so much work. Okay, let's fix this. Still don't want to do too much though because it will start to show, like if you keep applying layers and layers of this stuff, it will start to like show on you real bad. And then these other pieces, actually, you don't want any extra residue and stuff on your forehead. You should use like a stringent or something to get this up or even just regular water, but I don't feel like moving. So, I mean, it's my head. Ah, that was so much. I like to let my scarf sit for about 10, 15 minutes and then I take it off and finish up everything. How y'all quarantine diets going? Because mine has been trash and I had to put a stop to it for real. I've been like kind of putting the brakes on it a little bit, but like, nah, I got on the scale and I didn't gain like 10 pounds. I gotta really force myself to do outside and in-home workouts. It just don't hit the same. Let's see what this is looking like. I'm gonna make this quick cause I need to charge my phone, it's dying and we're doing a little drive-by graduation party for my younger cousin who just graduated from high school today. Oh, I'm gonna have to fix that too. I feel old y'all cause like she was, I was babysitting her my senior year of high school and, and now she's graduating from her senior year of high school. Sometimes mannequin heads just give you a rough draft. My wand's still heating up, but it can give me a little something. So because I put free spray on the top of the lace, I just like to, oh, we missed the spot. That's fine, we can go back. Anyways, like I was saying, so because I put free spray on top of the lace, I do like to kind of rev that back up so it doesn't look so manufactured. Well, not manufactured, but you know what I mean, like too in place, too product-y. And I'm gonna pull up my wax stick to help me set the hair. I love how full this hair is and it's so long. Like usually long hair can get kind of thin, but this one is nice and full and they didn't add any layers for you. So it's all one length. So I myself, after I finish refixing all this, am going to go through and add my own layers. Cause you see how low this is? It's cause it, it can't really flow. But this is cute too if you didn't want to add layers, okay. And I think I am going to add some touches of baby hair. All right, so, so, so I don't want super short layers. I do want them kind of long, so I am cutting down the front. Wait, does that make sense? I'm cutting about here. And you just cut in and cut down. It's really, it's really simple. I meant to do this on the mannequin head, but I just forgot. Now, fair warning, when you have this much free spray in the hair, you will get more tangles because free spray is like a hardening kind of product. Outside of me like plucking the frontal and adding these layers, the hair has not been shedding on me. This is actually my second install with Unice Hair. I'll link my first one if you want to see it. I was newer to frontals then. So, you know, it probably won't be the same kind of slay you see now, but you can see it if you want to. Oh, I almost forgot. I did not curl all this hair. So I just let that sit for a second and then I just kind of finger combed it back out and that gave me a little more body in the hair, especially after I, since, I, since I added those layers, I can't talk. 
And then it kind of even it back out because I did over pluck just a little bit right in here in these spots. You just put a little black powder. This is what I'm using. It's a cheap little wet and wild one. Now I just want like a touch. And I mean a touch of baby hair-ish. You know I wanna stay away. So this is the final result. Yes, it is effortless. I woke up like this, but I didn't really wake up like this. Beachy curls. If you like this hair, it'll be linked down below in the description box. Thank you so much. Bye.